So we can plug it back in. Sure, just cut it like right here. Okay. Merry Christmas. I don't need that. It's your truck. Merry Christmas. <laughs> We're not going to use this though, right? Nope. I mean, I'd hate to throw away a good looking curry or dash. But it's curry. It can sit on my shelf for a little bit. What's up, guys? Welcome to today's crazy... Rad Potential took over the gnarly little shop with a whole nother project trying not for, to the, for the weekend and trying not to die underneath a 74 Ford, Ford Courier cab. So, Calvin, what are we doing over here? So, because we don't need literally any of this, minus the... We probably need the pedals. Yeah. And I was gonna take the booster out. The pedals. <laughs> and the windshield. That's about all we need. So we're working on cutting the entirety of the floor out. We'll probably leave the top section of the tunnel just to provide a little bit of rigidity while we build a new floor and frame underneath it, or at least while Calvin does. Um so Calvin's idea was to put this thing four feet off the ground on these sawhorses. Now, it is pretty... It's a great idea in theory, but it did not pan out as well as I thought. It is pretty stable. Um, it's still very sketchy. But I wouldn't necessarily go under it for long periods of time. So, but that's just me. So that's that. Now, what I'm working on over here, but you guys, if you fall... Easy. It won't come out. Oh, that speedometer cable might be able to be used by somebody. <laughs> Just kidding, we don't care. Calvin's gonna hurt himself for this, though. So. Either that or you're. <laughs> I was gonna say either that or you're gonna fix and to rip the whole cab off the saw horses. You ever seen the inside of a speedometer cable? It looks like that. Magic. It makes no sense. How does that work? All right, we have a rad potential, generally, gently used 1974 Courier speedometer cable. Let me know if you need it, because we don't need it. So, Calvin's job, strip all of this. We do need to keep the uh, the hood release, though. Yeah, that's why I didn't rip it out. So, the hood release has to stay. We ripped all the wiring out. This is our safety, because 95% of the weight of this cab is right here, and, like... I'm not saying it's going to tip over, but we don't want it to, so that's why that's like that. Okay, so the speedometer cable thing aside, what am I working on? Well, as you know, we had solid bars welded in the rear um, for the suspension to set the ride height for now. And in the front, we still have the Pontiac G8 um, stock front coils. So, I scoured the local for sale listings and found a set of coilovers for a 2016 WRX Subaru Impreza. So that's these. These are Tyne Easy Streets or whatever you want to call it. Flex Z. Got them for cheap. They're used in pretty good shape, actually. So the reason that I bought these, besides the fact that they are available, cheap, but they're very short stroke. So one of the things that... Uh, that we don't need to keep from the G8 is the amount of suspension travel, right? We can kind of pick and choose how much travel we have. Um, and really, although the suspension arms are going to out-travel the shocks, um, that's not necessarily a bad problem to have, right? Especially when it's fully custom, we can tune the spring rates and adjust the dampening and do whatever we need to do because we're going to have to change that from any factory setup. I mean, it's going to be custom regardless. So... The STI coilovers, long story short, are very, very short in the front. So this is the front one, and Calvin's going to hold this camera here for a second. And I'm going to mock this up and show you. So this is the STI coil, and it's going to go in here like this. And if you notice, that's going to give us a whole eight more inches of hood clearance, and we should be pretty much dialed. So the goal is we're going to either re-drill these or plate these and re-drill them. And then the top, we're going to do away with the camber plate and just mount it off this single bolt hole because the lower link arm will allow us to adjust our camber um, in and out. And then we'll use the top of this, we'll make a hole that's slotted forward and backward, 
to adjust the caster from up here. So, how about that? Real race car stuff, get rid of this old big part of junk. Um, and yeah, these are still fully adjustable. We can run the grad height down or up, kind of do whatever we need to with them. And they were cheap, which is a win. The gist of my process for the back. Keep in mind, I've never done this before in my entire life. Um, this is where the factory G8 spring would fit. Obviously, the repo frame is pretty much in the way. And the G8 spring top would sit like right here. you know. So it's not coming up much higher than what this one is anyways. So I've taken the STI coilover. I removed the spring so that I can run the travel. And I want to see... So we're hitting this sway bar in link, which is not a problem. We can bend the sway bar or something or just remove it. Um, but I'm going to jack this up. I've made this little tab here just because I don't have enough hands. And I'm going to hold this in place while jacking that up. So this goes through the travel. And I want to see if there's anywhere I should worry that the spring itself is going to contact the frame or any of these control arms. Um, if need be, I can mount this coil over off this center bolt as well but back here I think it makes more sense to leave um, the top hat on so this is just temporary to help me hold it in place I'm gonna cut this bed support off and uh, we'll see how this goes so we're gonna hop back into doing some more science this will probably be a pretty lengthy video um, but we're gonna hop back into figuring this out and I'll give you guys the rundown as we uh, keep going all right guys so this is basically as high as this goes um, it's not contacting the frame up there but this is as high as this goes until it starts lifting the frame off the ground which is just flex in the uh, you know this upper link mount and that, that this that and the other so if you notice it's probably gonna be pretty dark but right here that spring would be really close to the frame right there if not hitting um, actually, I don't think it's, it would be too bad. So you see here what I'm looking at, which I know it came out of its little hole, but um, the spring pressure pushes it back up. But uh, the sway bar end link is definitely in the way, so the the sway bar will have to will have to probably bend the end of the sway bar in and then get. An adjustable link for now I'll probably just remove it um, remove the links and just let the sway bar chill we can figure something out um, in the future or re weld this link further over here so it mounts to the other side of the bar but uh, I'm thinking this is gonna work this is looking this is looking pretty promising um, I've got enough ride height adjustment in this shock still to shorten this stroke up or to shorten the move the shock body down um, so the spring sits further further below this. We'll probably end up notching some of, well, we don't really have to. We might cut that so you can't cut yourself on it. Um, but I think we're good. Essentially, this shock perch is going to mount. Oh! Well, heck, that's about bottomed out. It's going to mount basically like right there. So, where my thumb is, it's relevant elevation to the frame. And I'm going to build some plates and gussets to hold this in. But I think we should be good.
All right, my guys, so we are, well, Calvin's inside, but I'm out here fixing to finish weld the bottom of our rear upper shock perches. So here's the upper shock perch, quarter inch plate steel, cut, fitted, the whole deal to uh, accept our WRX coilovers. As you saw me just remove them. Super easy, don't even have to take the control arm out. Kind of got to be a little, you know, saucy on the bushings to get them out. But um, if when we raise the truck, so right now the coilovers are super short. When we raise the truck, it might become more of a pain in the butt to get that out. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyways, I need to weld the bottom of these across up in here which is why I got this up in the air pretty high um, I just want to be comfy jack stands the whole deal I'll get down here and weld that up we're gonna take these flat junky front wheels and tires off and this gangster 20 inch rim that we got up here and put those in the rear for now because as of right now the rear is completely done so I guess completely done as in the fabrication and design phase or the design phase. Final fabrication of this front mount, I'm gonna get and measure and do some actual like nice work um, here and put a, a, uh, uh, a sleeve here that's got a, a washer in it basically so this can bolt to that sleeve and then have some supports to go to the frame to make it look you know aesthetically pleasing. These I need to just cut these pieces back out and then I've got some temporary bolts in here for now um, but Calvin brought down the actual G8 subframe bolts, so they're huge, um, big coarse threads. So we're going to get the nuts that fit this, and then we're going to use those. I'll weld those nuts inside the repo frame, and then we can use the stock bolts to hold it up. So that's that's the intent there. That was just some temporary stuff, but I'll cut those out. Super pumped at how the rear of this is coming out. I mean, like I've said many times before, this is the first time I've ever attempted to do something like this. And actually like retrofit and build my own frame so honestly impressed with myself but impressed with like you know you you dream it here you put it down out here and it's it's working you know and I didn't even go to school for this I went to school to move dirt but this is just what I envisioned myself being able to do on my free time and and we're killing it killing the game so, Calvin's been cutting, grinding, welding, cutting, grinding, the whole deal, making making Swiss cheese of the factory floor in here. And basically, he is going to finish stripping this piece off here. Um, this, the actual floor on the piece of frame reinforcement. Strip that off up here. Then, strip this off, the sealed seat mount. We'll get rid of that. From there, what he's going to do is lay some of the, we've got some one inch square tube. We're going to lay that one inch square tube down this, under this rocker here, all the way through, um, where all this rust is. So there's going to be a piece of one inch square bar runs all the way through there to hold this edge up. That'll reinforce this body mount right here. And then uh, there's also a body mount back here. Then we'll probably lay some one inch square bar through here as well. And run a piece up tied into the firewall and this tunnel will go away and we'll build a new sheet metal tunnel but we still gotta we need to make sure the cab keeps its structure otherwise if you cut too much out of it and when you put it back together the cab might not be square so you'll have that i'm gonna go ahead right now hop back into welding this we're gonna move the front wheels to the back and then start looking at how to fit the front WRX coilover to the G8 spindle. So the two bolts that go through, the WRX is the same, whether we got a wall or a mount. Cut the whole thing off, replate it, drilling holes, we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Those WRX um, coilovers have a bit of, um, we'll just call it like caster offset for now, because the two bolts, the axis that the two bolts bolt to, and then the axis that the shock is on is not the same. 
so the two bolts are more vertical and the shocks kicked back so I do have to fit one of those on the right and one of them on the left there's going to be a specific one as it's going to pitch back and forth no it shouldn't how that's pitched is not going to affect the caster angle but it's going to affect how I set the caster if that makes sense so I'll have to set the caster based off of the spindle and not based off of the angle of the shock. If I set it off the angle of the shock, the spindle could be positive, which would be no bueno. But getting complex, the goal for tomorrow for my, on my end of the design is uh, get those coilovers fitted to these. The truck is still going to get pushed back out of the garage with these big tall struts in it just because it rolls like this. And then uh, we're leaving the cab in here because we don't want all the fresh metal to rust instantly. Calvin will be down in a couple more weeks and we'll just keep working on this. Um, and I gotta keep, you know, cranking on the rally car, doing body work and uh, installing the dash, doing all that stuff. So let's get back to work on this thing. And uh, yeah, pumped. All right, guys, day two of the weekend, suspension build on the vert truck slash fixing the floor. So we got, Calvin's been cranking away back here, making this new brace to go, I mean, you can see the new square bar. There, there, there. It's going to run all the way through the rocker. We're gonna... Eventually, this will all get replaced. But it's not super high priority right now for what we need to get done. So, I guess I probably ought to just cut that top lip off so it's not underneath. Uh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves. But anyways, we're going to strengthen the corner, the rocker, with this one by square tube that you see. Slid down here. Do the same on both sides and build a little bit of a frame in here for the floor to sit on out of this one by. So it might be overkill, but uh, making this cab more rigid is only going to make the uh, chassis more rigid. And uh, we definitely don't want this thing coming apart with us in it. So trying to be as safe and prepared as possible. So there's going to be kind of that, that bar there that's coming across to this existing cab structure. will come over to the tunnel. We'll have a new bar that runs down the tunnel. And then once this side's built, then we'll start cutting this side out. And then once this side's built, we'll cut the whole tunnel out. Because um, this adds a ton of structural rigidity to what we've got going on here right now. Uh, we don't want to remove it until we are ready to remove it. So we took some measurements off of the RX-8 transmission and also off of this cab so that way we know not to make the floor too wide so the transmission doesn't fit between the floor. Um, but this tunnel is going to be too short in this area and here that's going to need to come up a little bit instead of going down like that rx8 trans much taller bigger beefier but we can fix the height problem with the tunnel we just don't want to encroach on it and that rx8 transmission is huge um for what it is so but we are making progress getting stuff done getting stuff done so he's got a little bit of some cutting science to do. One of the other mega unfortunate things is that, you know, these F1R wheels are worth so much money. Somebody had to put these fancy locking lug nuts on here. And I don't have a key for it. So we can't take this wheel off until we get the key. Which kind of sucks. So once Calvin gets kind of a little more dialed over here and I get whatever big welding stuff that he needs me to do done, I'm going to start taking this front wheel off 
and start mocking up the STI strut on that spindle. And just looking at it, it looks like it might be really close. I'd be stoked if it bolts on. So for now, I am going to go ahead and drop the rear down. Um, put this on the ground. It should be good. We were jumping and doing all sorts of stuff on the back of this last night. And the other thing too, so we thought this was going to be soft with these springs. And our initial, like, we jumped on this, we thought it was soft. And then we went out and jumped on the back of my truck, the stock one. And it's really not that much softer than what the stock truck is. So it might be better, it might be worse. Um, generally trucks are stiff in the rear for payload. But uh, we're not really hauling that much with this. So if this makes it handle better, then we'll leave it. But we are, with these coilovers, super easy to change springs. And springs aren't that expensive. So... That'll at least get us in the ballpark of what spring rates we need for the truck. And then uh, if Calvin wants to upgrade the dampers, so like actually getting a set of like Olins or whatever, something fancy, right? Multi-adjust instead of just the, the stiff and soft adjustment we have. Um, we already know a spring rate to put in there, and then we can make it better down the road. But... It's looking like fun. We've made a mess in the shop. Again. Or the cab made a mess in the shop. All of that. Leaves, junk, rust, old floor. Dirt. Dirt. Without like coming up here and mm -hmm. trimming that off, it's not gonna get much better. But I'll use my actual like, cut off, my fancy cut off, mm -hmm. and uh, try and do that, shape that a little better. Well, you can't see concrete through it, so that's a plus. That is a plus. Custom floor right there. So, better than it was. Oh, yeah. Finished. And then probably what I'll do, since this moved in just a little bit, whenever this is all done, since it's still not really that sound, mm -hmm. I'll take, when we get this plate in here, and it's on the truck, I'll just take the corner power, push it back out. Okay. Because even with that frame in there, I can still move it by hand, mm -hmm. so... The floor is not going to do much mm -hmm. since we don't have a roof. Yep. But, uh... Yeah, and this wasn't built to be a convertible, so when you remove the roof, it loses a lot of structure. Yeah. So, better than it was. It at least doesn't have a million holes in it. That's how this side still is. Yeah. <laughs> only got only about 500,000 holes. Doors closed on, so. <laughs> Alright, guys, so that's going to conclude this video here today, this weekend. Matt, thanks to uh, Calvin for coming down and working on his own truck. Um, pretty stoked. Super stoked with how the, the rear came out. Calvin getting the floor built. We'll address the front the next time. Both of those wheels have those stupid lock nuts on them. We can't get the wheels off. Driving me up the wall. Yeah, I looked into they both do, and I didn't want to mess with trying to take these, like fitting it in there, and not. I wanted the spindle to be all open, you know. <coughs> so, not too much progress has been made on the front. But the next time we get down here, I'm gonna do some research on the steering. Hopefully, we can figure out what we need to do to hook the G8 up to the Courier Repu 
um, column. And then uh, Calvin will get more of the floor and stuff fixed. And then from there, once we kind of get a feel for the steering, I'm going to remake these front rear subframe mounts so they're pretty and permanent. And then uh, once the rear subframe mounts are permanent back here, then we're done in the rear. So this section's good to go. Then we just need to start working on the front, which is a whole other ball game. We got a new lower link. If you remember from the last video, the lower link was all bent up. We straightened it good enough, but uh, we got a new one now for the driver's side. They're looking good. I don't know, Calvin, what are your thoughts? End of the day, oh, it's dark day. outside. It's dark outside, and i got to drive home yet. Uh, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with the progress we made. The yeah. floor took longer than I thought it would, but it's definitely turning out fairly nice. Yeah. And the rear suspension was so powerful. Uh, the coilover mounts are pretty good. Nice too. It's going to turn out pretty good, all in all. So, I think I uh, had a comment on one of my social media posts asked what the purpose of the truck was whether it was autocross or track truck or whatever and my response was a portion disguise so I think we're gonna we'll make that happen 300 horsepower big tires super, supreme level of handling I think that uh, it'll rip sure. we ought to be able to put, put a hurting on most Porsches that would cost within we'll say five times of our total investment we could probably put a hurt on most Porsches that cost, you know, under fifty grand. Yeah, I don't think we'll be we able to touch. I don't think we'll be able to touch like a GT3 or something, but you know, like a Cayman, we could probably outhandle a Cayman. <laughs> I can do that. Heck yeah! All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. We're gonna get some rest and clean up and move this back outside. The cab's gonna stay in here, so. Be prepared to see that in videos for a couple weeks and uh, we'll get the race car back in here and we've burned all our firewood so I guess that means it's quitting time. Thank you all for watching. Keep it red. See you in the next one. Alright. Heave ho, I won't crash. RX-7 rally car, first off-road experience. Calvin powered. Hopefully we don't lose the fenders or the front core support or valence. We're going right in the shop. Oh yeah. Oh come on, you bitch. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I get the truck. I get the track. I really oh, thought shit. it's gonna go over it. Oh, oh the wheel was turning. I thought we were gonna make it.